Good morning, class. I'm doing a surprise performance in a show in four days, and I have to make a Shrek costume today. Help me out on this episode of Mr. Jamie on Campus. I have to make a Shrek costume today, in one day, and fortunately, in Shrek the Musical, the costume is pretty simple. It's a poncho style, uh, long shirt made out of burlap that's shredded a bit on the edges, and it ha he has a uh, animal skin vest that's tied together and a belt. And then um, for pants, we're, I'm just going to go off the shelf and buy some plaid pajama pants, some large ones that'll be kind of drapey, and then some brown boots that I'll tuck the pajama pants down into the boots. And that, that's the, the whole costume. So I'm going to use the drape method. I've got this um, seamstress uh, dummy. The, it's a it's adjustable, but it's not adjustable. It's not meant to be as big as a guy like me. And so I got a small set of, of football pads, which makes the shoulders just a little bit thicker than mine, which will be fine because I'm going to put some uh, other padding under it probably. Even though I'm not a thin person, Shrek is large, very large. So I'm, um, I'm going to put some, some padding under there. So... So the plan is uh, for me to drape the burlap and make the, that burlap uh, poncho first. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get some quilting material because I want to do this twice and the quilting material will provide some softness and thickness to underneath the burlap. I've got the quilting material and I'm going to drape it first, pin it up, and then uh, after that we'll use that as a model for the burlap. Rough measurements, I just need to make sure that when I get into it that it's not uh, real tight around my chest. With, with a deep breath, about 50 inches. Okay. After a trip to Walmart, now I have scissors. These will be taken within a day or two by somebody who needs to cut paper. Just want to make sure that my cut is right dead center of this material. It's dead on. Go with 17 inches around. Plus room for my head. I'm just pinning the edges together so we don't lose track of them and then I'll end up sewing them together. These two layers, if they ever come apart, it's going to be a mess. Okay, now... How much belly do I have? It needs to be at least 52 around. head goes through it. That's good. Just making sure that my body is pinned right. So I pinned under the arm I've got the sleeve length. I know what the body is supposed to be, so I should be able to 
just make sure that the sides are symmetrical and then pin it all the way around and then I can cut it. We put it together with a straight stitch. Now this clearly is not made to be used on the outside. This is a liner for a quilt and it will eventually shred, um, but that's okay because I just need it for one or two performances. So. So now I turn it inside out and we see how it works. Part one. The next step is the burlap actual shirt. And I bought burlap However, when I, to drape this using the same method, this is not quite wide enough <clears throat> because if you drape it, the sleeves will be short just like this. So what I did in this case, since we have the underclothes portion of this, I took two pieces and using a zigzag stitch because it's really porous right on the factory edge I zigzagged it all the way down so now again this is a costume so it's not a ready-to-wear type thing um, which is no big deal that there's a seam across the top I'm going to drape it and that seam is going to ride the top of the shoulder just like my sweater has and it should be more than enough length Now, cutting the neck hole. Okay. I'm going to go, I've, I've got the material pulled about, this is the edge of the undergarment. I've got it pulled out about an inch and a half to two inches and a little short of the armpit. And then I'm going to pin on the outside of here. So it's going to be essentially a three, two and a half to three inch addition. It'll just make it a little blousy. Now 
reach in there. I'm trying to drag it out without. There we go. Okay. That's the undergarment. There's the burlap ready to sew. Now, stitches, I'm not sure. I'm going to give a stitch with some body in it. Maybe I'll try a zigzag um, and see if that works. And if not, then I'll do something even more dramatic. Take it to the finger here. I'm going to reverse. All right. Lift the foot and give it a turn. It's not a good idea to have to shove all the material through this hole here. I should have sewn it from the other side. This is where the pins are starting to come out on this side. Probably because I drug it all the way through this open hole. I need to do a better job of planning where the material goes through. And cut it. Lift the foot. Okay. Seems to be seems to be pretty strong I'm giving it about a half inch of clearance because it's hard to see and I hate to mess up all right let's see how symmetrical it is it may not be very but It's not bad. I mean, he made this out in the swamp, right? I'm gonna turn it inside out. Okay. Put it together on the dummy. Undershirt. to be right at almost down to the waist on the side here okay so that's how, how far down I'm going let me pull this sleeve back out and make sure yeah Now, what would be great is if I could find a Sharpie. This will just make it more permanent. That's my sketch. Now, what I could do is go ahead and cut it out really far away from the line and then turn it over and pin it all until it's just like I want it. I think that's what I'll do on, in this case, being very careful not to cut the actual uh, the garment underneath. So I'm going to leave myself a lot, maybe four inches, all around the lines. This is where I could potentially really mess up. Gotta be careful here not to mess up 
my underarm seam. Oh no, I just cut it really close to that line by accident. That'll just have to be, that'll just have to be an irregular, an irregular line because I cut it really high over here. Okay, I guess, again, accuracy is not necessarily what an ogre is known for, so. Okay, now I'm going to go through and start pinning up the, uh, the seam all the way around. And then once I have that, then it's just a matter of sewing it all together. I'm getting close. I'm mainly just worried about all these pins coming out on me because this faux fur material is so thin. Mm. Okay, so I'm definitely going to need some sort of uh, complex stitch, not a straight stitch, to put this together because there's really very little material to grab onto, and I don't want to line this thing. It's not going to be used long enough for me to go through the trouble of lining it. I like this. This is coming over the shoulder pretty good. Um, the neckline is a little bit small, but we'll see what it looks like. And I'll even probably tie this up. We'll see. I'm just going to use pajama pants for his pants, some boots I already have for the boots. Uh, all I have left to do is to poke holes and lace this up, and we've, we're done. Yeah, I've got this yarn, but it just doesn't seem to be thick enough for my taste. So I think I'm going to braid it into a little bit thicker piece. Okay, so... We'll uh, poke some holes. There it is. What do you think? All right, guys, there's the costume. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, if there's really, I'm not going to put any plans out or pattern. Um, the process, the draping process that I used, you can use as well. I think the key is to when you create your form, whatever it is, give you a little bit of wiggle room. So my, uh, these shoulders, uh, in, in reality are two inches bigger than my actual shoulders so that there's plenty of room in case I got, I made a mistake. And, um, of course we all know this is not going to last forever. This will last a couple of performances and it'll need some maintenance, but, if you're doing a Shrek performance and there you've got three, uh, three or four performances plus dress rehearsals, it could potentially last. The undergarments will, the this would last. You might have to do a little hand stitching uh, to fix some rips and frays. Um, but this piece is really delicate and it's the most expensive part. The material for this had a coupon um, to uh, Joanne's Fabrics and so I got 40% off the entire order. And um, I believe the total of the material cost me about $40. Um, and uh, so, now that was with a coupon. This is supposed to be $18 a yard, and I bought two yards of this, this material. So, anyway, there it is. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to ask me questions about it or, uh, or make suggestions or tell me something you think I did wrong. Then please email me at jamie at mrjamie.com. 
Otherwise, there's more to do with this show, so uh, I'll catch you on the next episode of Mr. Jamie on Campus. <laughs>